Hi, I'm Jesse Rack from Intercultural Elements. Alex is joining us today all the way from Brighton in the UK. Uh, it's pretty rare that we get visitors here in Leipzig, so we're excited to be able to pick Alex's brains on all things European VAT and what that means for you as an e-commerce seller. We help e-commerce sellers um, across 47 countries. VAT register and comply uh, when they're selling cross borders. So it's really important to know where you're holding your stock um, and then what compliance obligations you have when trading internationally. Fantastic. Some questions from some of our viewers that have come in. Um, and I think this is a great question. What are the potential pitfalls that, um, that an e-commerce retailer needs to know about when expanding internationally with regards to VAT? So I think the number one uh, pitfall is not knowing where your stock is. So holding stock within an EU country triggers an automatic obligation to be VAT registered. So if you don't know where your stock is being held, you don't know what obligations you have. So um, I think the number one thing is to look, either know where your stock is being held, which warehouse you're using, or if you're using Amazon Fulfillment Center, be looking on your seller central because Amazon can sometimes move your stock around and uh, without you knowing. So it's really important to understand where your stock is being held so that you can um, act upon your VAT obligations. Okay, cool. And you mentioned FBA. Um, just as a quick tip, is there an easy way for an Amazon seller to see within, a, within Seller Central exactly where their item is being held? Do they need to automatically register for all seven countries? Uh, not automatically. So if you've enabled PAN EU in, uh, in your Seller Central, then you have that automatic obligation to have okay. seven VAT registrations. Um, but I would say the best way to know where your stock is, is if you go into your Amazon VAT transaction report under Reports and Fulfillment by Amazon, um, you can look at column BO and it will tell you which countries your stock is being held. Um, and that's really kind of the key place that we look when looking into where stock is being held because sometimes Seller Central doesn't tell you exactly where your stock is being held. Okay, that's brilliant. So that's column BO, that's just the most yes. sort of standard Amazon Excel export then? On the VAT transaction report specifically. Great stuff. Yeah, so there's um, what's called the distance selling rules. And these can actually play in your favor as an e-commerce seller uh, because what they are is you can hold your stock in one EU country and then sell cross borders mm -hmm. uh, to other customers in other EU countries um, up until set thresholds within a calendar year. So you can use that to see where your customers are based um, and kind of grow slowly and internationally. Um, however, if you do cross over those thresholds within a calendar year, you then have to be registered in that EU country and then um, start to file your VAT in that specific um, inbound country. So you okay. need to know and be monitoring those distance selling thresholds each year because um, the thresholds are 35,000 euros in most EU countries. And if you're selling medium to high value goods, you can cross over those quite yeah. easily. So um, yeah, it's really important to understand where, the, your, where your stock or how, how much you're selling, how much volume you're yeah. selling. And I can imagine, of course, as well, you know, you say 35,000 euros, maybe that's not, maybe that's most of the countries. It might not be all of the countries. And of course, if you're selling to say the UK and it's in pounds, then maybe you don't know exactly how many pounds are going to be the 35,000 euros, or maybe it's a different threshold there. Yeah, and you, when you're selling into the UK, you have up until 70,000 pounds. Okay. And then uh, Netherlands, Germany, and Luxembourg are 100,000 euros. Wow, okay. So yeah. there's some uh, good first step countries then. Maybe, you know, go to the UK and then Germany first. Yeah, exactly. Before, uh... Exactly. Excellent. So on the topic of uh, selling into the UK, um, obviously, a lot of our viewers are coming from the UK, but for those uh, for those sellers, say from the US or maybe from Germany, would you have any particular tips going towards the UK as a seller selling into the UK? Anything that they should be watching out for in particular? Yeah, absolutely. Um, currently, HMRC is auditing all non-UK sellers. So that's all of them. I know they're undergoing about 30,000 right wow. now. So um, it's really important to make sure that you are VAT registered. Mm -hmm. If you're holding stock within the UK, um, if you're the importer of record, you need, or if you're crossing over those distant selling thresholds, you need to make sure you're being VAT registered because HMRC does have the power to shut down your Amazon accounts, eBay accounts, any um, anything that you're operating on. Uh, they will be able to shut you down. And wow. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> and backdate your VAT registration. So you could end up owing hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of pounds um, worth of VAT if you're not compliant for the last five years um, per se. And so what about for UK sellers who then want to expand into Europe? Obviously, the majority of the UK registered businesses are going to have a VAT number in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, let's say that they're hitting those thresholds or they've got Amazon moving their items around the different FBA warehouses they should then be getting a VAT, they should then be looking for VAT numbers in Europe. Um, Absolutely. What else should they be looking out for? 
Um, well, first, yeah, you need to make sure that you're registering for VAT um, in each of those countries that you're holding stock. After that, there's other compliance obligations that you have. So if Amazon is moving your stock between EU countries, uh, you'll have to file EC sales lists. And these lists document the movement of stock between uh, the EU uh, authorities, mm -hmm. and that documents the taxable supply. So it, um, you have to make sure you're filing those in each time you are filing a VAT return. Um, in the outbound country. So it can be quite frequent, especially with the Amazon um, moving yeah. your stock around quite quite often. What should a seller be looking at when they're, when they're interviewing different companies to be looking after their VAT? How should it be priced? What are the, what are the different pitfalls on that front of view, uh, point of view? What should they be looking for in a company for doing this? Yeah, I wouldn't say um, cheapest is the best way to go. It may be helping your cash flow short term, but long term, what we've seen is sellers getting um, getting fines from the tax authorities for late filings or late payments, um, or they're not complying properly. So I would say make sure that you're you know doing your due diligence on a company, checking on the forum, seeing what others have to say that use those companies. Um, otherwise, you know services that offer you know one-to-one -one help because not everyone has the same VAT obligations. Right. Maybe you're holding stock in one country and that's fine, but we've come to learn you know different people have uh, B2B transactions or you're moving stock here, you've crossed over a certain threshold or you have to backdate so far in a certain country. So each person um, in each company has a different obligation requirements. Mm -hmm. And so it can't really be treated as a blanket cover. It needs to look at um, as an individual company. Right. Is there a way for a non-UK or non-European seller or somebody that isn't yet registered in all these countries to keep their, their filing costs down? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, especially as a non-EU seller, um, you should start holding your stock in one country like the UK where there's less filing requirements. Um, you can choose to file quarterly or annually and um, you can use those distant selling thresholds to uh, cro sell cross borders to your customers and locate where your customers are before expanding into those other EU countries. Um, especially as a non-EU seller, you have to have fiscal representation in certain countries okay. like um, France, Italy, Spain, Poland, some of those um, main e Amazon EU countries. Um, and that means you have extra uh, bank guarantees, uh, fees to cover that fiscal representative's liability of the VAT. So it does add up at the beginning. So I think if you're trying to keep your costs down, start in countries like Germany and the UK, where you don't have as much cost of compliance. Mm -hmm. And those are actually the two biggest markets in the EU. So they're a good place to start nonetheless. Definitely. Once again, I'm Jesse Ragg from Intercultural Elements. And I'd like to really thank Alex Wyatt from Simply VAT for joining us today. Uh, hopefully you get something out of this video too, and we'll see you next time.